We're in the seat of Dixon, north of Brisbane. Dixon is one of those patchwork seats. It links a lot of island suburbs separated by industrial parks and commuter highways. It stretches to the semi-rural villages of the Dagala Range. The local member is the Home Affairs Minister, Peter Dutton, who has a narrow margin of about 2%. Dutton has been ensconced here for 18 years. He has, as the Home Affairs Minister, become one of the government's most prominent and controversial members. And that was before the leadership challenge. When Dutton blew up the Turnbull government and made an unsuccessful play for the Prime Ministership. ...prospect of leading the Liberal Party to success at the next election. Now Dixon is home to a great political experiment, the never-ending campaign in a place where people would rather talk footy than about politics. Where name recognition could hurt the incumbent as much as it helps. Where Get Up has knocked on more than 12,000 doors. All of the campaigns here spending more money and effort than usual for a single seat. Dutton has faced tough challenges before. He's been written off in previous elections, but always held on to Dixon. We're in the final days now of a local campaign that has run for well over a year. And on the ground, there is still a sense that this contest is too close to call. The people in this electorate don't go in for campaigns. A lot of them know Peter Dutton and so find him um, someone they will continue to vote for because, because they have always voted for him. But the people who come to the Chamber of Commerce are very engaged and they will talk politically to you and they understand the issues and that some of them are quite vehemently opposed to Peter Dutton because of um, what happened in the, in the political scene. But Peter Dutton came to the chamber as a guest speaker in March and that um, function was very well attended. There was no political um, placarding out the front. Nobody was um, upset. They were very polite. Um, it was not the sort of um, engagement with Peter Dutton that you see um, in front of cameras. Not that I'm saying I agree with what happened with Peter either, but I have known him a long, long time. And there'd be other residents like me who are struggling with what happened and the fact that they've known Peter for a long time. He's lived in the area since he was a boy. There's a lot of pride in the fact that Peter Dutton represents this electorate in Canberra and represents as well. There was a bit of bewilderment and perhaps a little bit of shame attached to the spill. Uh, I think there's a resentment towards Dutton himself, but the organist majority will swing Liberal National. Yeah, so you don't see any any massive change despite all of what I, I can't see it, no. The demographic yeah. sort of Liberal National voters. And... With apologies to Thor Prohaska, there's no strong independent candidate in this electorate. The Greens pre-selected a respected human rights lawyer, Benedict Coyne, but they aren't usually a factor in a place like Dixon. Dutton's strongest challenge will come from Labor's Ailey France, a former journalist and disability advocate. Labor has steered clear of the sorts of issues that have made Dutton loved and loathed, immigration and refugee policy. Instead, France's campaign has been pitched at the suburbs, at the hip pocket, cost of living issues, health and hospital funding. We found from travelling around the seat of Dixon that climate change is one of the major issues that could potentially sway voters. These suburbs have among the highest uptake of solar panels anywhere in the country. And it certainly was something that people talked about. There are areas that are typically small L liberal, but where people do have environmental concerns. I particularly think out here at Samford, yes, the people here are very keen on the environment and uh, keen on the gardens. So I'm a little bit of an individual greenie. I've got chooks vegetables uh, in my own small garden um, closer to town. And I think that climate change is forcing people to think more about what they can do for themselves and live sustainably. But out here at Samford, where they have the, the larger acreages, I think that that could, be, uh, could have an impact on the way they vote. It's very difficult for um, me, my husband, my sons, who traditionally would be Liberal voters, would vote for Peter Dutton, to marry that up with what we know is going to happen with um, climate change under the, another Liberal government. And, you know, a lot of the, our customers are environmentalists. They, they don't just do it because it's um, going to make the money, although there are those as well. There are other issues here too. And in a campaign that has become so personalised, so focused on Peter Dutton, some people are worried that 
they're not getting the attention they deserve. We need lots of assistance down here. Our families can't afford to go to school, can't afford to eat, can't afford to live. We need lots of help. So I'm Jerry Lister from the Youth Development Foundation in Strathpine. Um, Youth Development Foundation's been running for five years now, assisting unemployed, disadvantaged young people. Yeah, we don't, we, we've never seen a federal politician within this organisation, ever. Um, we get some state assistance, with our state politicians are on board, but our federal politicians we haven't seen from, haven't heard from, and we only get to see them now that it's election time. We've got families that can't afford to send their kids to school for textbooks and uniforms, they can't feed them. Um, there's drug and alcohol substance abuse in this town is out of control. That's, that is openly admitted in, in the right context if people are asking the right questions. Okay, so you don't see Peter Dutton? Haven't seen him. Haven't seen him. In the five years that we've been doing what we do here, haven't seen that man once. My name's Jeremy Johnstone. I've come out today to make sure the LNP don't get in. Uh, every time they do get in, we, uh, we get massive cuts to the community sector. Uh, I've been working in the community sector for 16 years, uh, currently for a domestic violence service and also a disability support service. Uh, and what they do to community funding is they, they cut it. It's not just about the middle class, it's about those people at the arse end. I'm not aligned with any, any political party. Um, I just want to get these guys out because I know as soon as we knock these guys off and we get a Labor Green government, we, we start getting some funding back in the community. We start to get a little bit back, you know, instead of uh, these mega corporations, companies that aren't, aren't getting charged any tax. I'm paying more tax than some of these corporations. It's, it's ridiculous. I think so. <laughs> Thank you. I, I get a bit of that every now and then. Um. As this long campaign enters its final days, there is still a sense in Dixon that the contest is on a knife edge. The critical votes can still be won and lost. I am a very unenthusiastic door knocker. It's not something that I would love to spend my Saturdays doing if I wasn't passionate. But every time we've gone out, every time I've done it, I'd say I've changed at least two people's minds. It's really quite amazing. It's uh, nice to be in front of the cameras where I can uh, smile. And Peter Dunn, know. who nine months ago almost became Prime Minister, has been written off in Dixon before. He's held the seat, often against the national tide, for 18 years. And on Saturday, after the most gruelling of all those campaigns, he will once again face the voters with his political fate in their hands.